Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. Today I want to show you how to safely update NPM packages with NPM check updates. Now we've all got those old projects that are several months old that when we return to, we realize that a bunch of the packages are out of date. And so you want to get any security fixes you can. In addition to that, you might have some new features that you'd have access to if you had the latest version of each of those packages. Uh, now on the left here, I've got an old coffee website that I have a couple friends who buy some coffee through me um, that they go and look at that. And uh, it's been several months since I've updated it. I wanted to do some work on it and I realized I needed to update the packages. Now on the right here, I've got actually my blog and here's a blog post explaining how I do this. And this is what I'm gonna walk you through. And there'll be a link in the description to this. All right, uh, if you wanna access the full docs, you can click here, that will just open up uh, this on npmjs.com and walk you through kind of the same thing, but I'll show you how I use uh, this package updater. All right, so I come back over here. The first thing you need to do is install it globally on your machine. And the reason I do this is so that no matter what directory I'm in, I'll have access to this. You don't have to do this. You can also just uh, run it through MPX if you'd rather, but I like to have it go installed on my machine and then it's pretty quick and easy to do. All right, now that I've done that, I'm in my local directory and I can come down this way. And the first thing I do is run MPX NCU. And as you can see on the right and eventually here on the left, it'll actually walk through all your packages and tell you what is up to date and what is out of date. You can see here I've got four things that need to be updated, some of them pretty severely so, like the Netlify CLI, and some of them, uh, like Vite, just have minor and patch versions available. Now, the way these numbers works, work, uh, semantic versioning, basically, and I explain this here, but these different areas divided by dots are the patches, which should just be bug fixes, the minor versions, which should be backwards compatible, but they should be new features, and then the major versions, which are not necessarily backwards compatible, they will probably break something. Whether you use it or not is another question, um, but you'd want to check into that. So here's kind of the process I go through. All right, first of all, I fix all the patches because those are just patches and all they're doing is fixing bug uh, things. So there shouldn't be a problem. I should be able to update those, no problem. You can see now on the right that all those things, those patches have been updated. And now I just have to type npm install to ensure that everything is working. Once that finishes up, I'll go ahead and just open it up locally and make sure everything is working as I'd expect. And if it is, I'll go ahead and commit some changes. Now, the reason I'm doing the commit is so that way I can bounce back to this if for some reason, updating the minor versions or eventually the major versions break something. All right, so we've got that set and now I can bounce back to that if I need to. The next thing I do is come back over here and the minor versions as well should be backwards compatible. They shouldn't break anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those as well. And it walks through each of those and then I'll follow the exact same practice. I do npm i to install all of those. When that finishes, I would go ahead and commit again to have a save checkpoint here. Once I've got all the patches and minor versions done, then I would wanna go ahead and run one more time mpx ncu to see what I have left to update. Now this should be just the major versions left and you see that's what I've got. Now there's kind of two approaches you can take at this point. You can either just YOLO update and kind of hope that everything works out, uh, which sometimes for small projects, that's not a problem, especially if you've just committed, you can always just jump back and that's probably quicker um, to just try it out. Um, especially if it involves payments or anything that would be serious, obviously you'd have to be pretty careful in doing that. So what you can do is just go one at a time. So what I would probably do is on a production site, or if I wasn't recording this video, I would go and read all the fetch docs and see what changed and if I would be using any of those features in my scripts. So assuming, let's say I thought, hey, I don't think it'll break too much or it might break something, but let me just fix it one at a time. Then what I would do is take this right here. And since I'm actually filtering for node fetch, that's what this means. So I'm updating and I wanna filter only things called node fetch. Then what I would be doing is actually updating just the node fetch to the major version. Once again, I'd have to type npm i or npm install and install those. And then once that finishes up, I would actually open it up locally here just to make sure that everything still seems to be working. I may even actually publish it and then commit this change and kind of secure this one. Next, I would come in and since I know I only have one version left, I can just do npx ncu and then update otherwise i'd filter for the next one and update that so as i kind of work through each of these i'm actually slowly updating things one at a time in a kind of a controlled fashion first the patches then the minor versions and then finally the major versions committing between each of those so i can always jump back if i need to 
I hope this was a help to you. Again, I'll have links in the description below. And uh, go ahead and let me know what is the biggest jump you've had. Three major versions is, uh, that's been a while since I've had that. So it, like I said, it's been several months since I've looked at this and that makes sense. So sometimes stuff like that happens. All right, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.